Okay, what is up Inside Out? You guys got the hint. You can go ahead and have a seat real quick. Hey, I have a question for you as you're finding a seat and uh, getting situated there. Have you ever wondered why we do that? Like, like the whole music side of things. If you, you know, if you think about it, like the, the opening part when we have Sam come out here and act an absolute fool for a few minutes. I love you, Sam, if you can hear my voice. Um, you know, it makes sense. Like it makes this place fun. We give away prizes. People love getting free stuff. Like that makes sense. The, the, the time when somebody comes out here and they, they give like a talk or a message and, uh, you know, kind of tell you about what, what God says in his word. Like that part makes sense. Like this is a church after all. And, and then after this, you go to a small group and, and that makes sense because that's your friends and your community and like all that makes sense. But why do we take the time every service, every time we gather together to have this specific point where we sing together? Have you ever wondered that? I know I have because um, I can't speak for everybody in the room, but I'm not the greatest singer. Like, I, I, if you've ever had to stand by me in worship, your ears leave bleeding typically. And, and it's one of those things where, like, I, I like to try, um, and I'm glad we play the music really loud here, but, like, I, I'm not very good at it. And so I've asked myself before, like, why, why do we do this? And so I figured instead of having myself try to answer that question, um, since I'm no music expert here tonight, and, and maybe some of you uh, relate more to me, I decided to ask some of my friends who uh, have a little bit better understanding of this. So if you guys will, please give a warm inside out welcome to Ava, Alex, Abby, and Chris. Y'all give it up for them real quick. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, you guys know these people. They, they worship on stage. They play the guitar. They help behind the scenes. Like, you see them around all the time. And uh, I thought that since we're going to talk about what is worship, why do we do this singing part of the service, I thought I would incorporate the people who make that happen every week and kind of use them to, to help answer that question. Because tonight, as we talk about worship, one of the things I want to understand is it's, it's more than just the songs that we sing at Inside Out. Like, that's a part of it, and we'll get into that in a minute, but it's more than that. It's not just the songs that we sing or this time in the service where um, you kind of, you know, wait for the loudness to die down so you can keep talking to your friends. Worship is actually so much more, and, and what I want you to understand tonight is that worship is really kind of a posture that we have. It's, it's a, a lifestyle that we're supposed to live, and so it's something that I want you guys to not only experience corporately, like when we're all together in a room like this, but also something that you experience individually by yourself personally in your daily lives. And so um, uh, I have a first, I'm gonna ask these guys some questions so you don't have to just hear me talk the whole time. So my first question uh, for the panel is that all of you guys lead worship uh, in some way or another and either on stage or behind the scenes or with a you know, guitar in your hand or behind a microphone. Um, talk about how you experience worship in your lives, both corporately, all together in a room like this, and also personally, like individually in your lives. Uh, Chris, why don't you kick us off with that one? Yeah, thanks, Keith. Yeah. So I feel really fortunate that I get to um, do something that I feel called to do every day, make music and lead worship and that kind of stuff. And obviously some really worshipful moments happen when we're all together, like we just experienced that when I'm on stage with my friends and my peers, um, singing to Jesus, lifting up the only name we believe is worth lifting up, right? But in my personal life, since I feel like God has called me to play music, I feel like times that I, some of the times where I feel closest to God are when I'm in my rehearsal space preparing to do what God has called me to do. And when I'm rehearsing or when I'm memorizing or when I'm preparing to lead worship, those moments are just as worshipful as when we're all together. Man, that's really good. So you mean you don't just like show up and you just know all these songs you have to like practice? Alex does. He's that talented. Oh, okay. Alex, so I want you to chime in. Alex, go ahead. No, no way, Chris. You know everything. <laughs> um, man, for, for me, um, it's, I think the corporate, like doing this is really incredible because you can kind of feel the energy in the room and everybody's jumping. But um, like Chris, like I do find like a, a lot of uh, power in just like my worship, like with me and the Lord. Um, and usually what that looks like is it does look like my preparation and, and doing that and preparing for uh, sets and when we do like worship tonight and like, and, and it's just kind of getting in my room and with my guitar or with a piano and just feeling the, the song and just be like, okay, Lord, what do you want to do here? And um, I found that when I prepare that way, that when we can come into this space and we come together, that I can be prepared enough that in my mind, I'm like, okay, I know this is where we want to go. But if you know, if you ever, if you've ever wondered, like, if we're kind of like thinking, it's probably because we're trying to go, like, okay, something else is happening in the room. But I think those are the moments that are incredibly powerful for us. Um, we hope that you know it is for you guys as well, just to see the Lord kind of do something different, or if we want to sing something different, or or something just happened. Um, but just being kind of open to that 
Um, but for me, that's just so powerful to experience that. I love that. I love that in order for us to do this part of worship where we're on stage and the lights are on and everybody's jumping around, the seniors are down front killing it, jumping up and down. Like, well, no, in order for us to do that, I hear both of you guys saying like you prepared for that personally in worship beforehand, like by yourself when you're alone with God. And I love that, that just reminder because in order to get to do the, the all together corporate style, we have to do the individual personal first. And I love that kind of uh, thing that you guys highlighted there because they're both important. Um, also, like worship is, is, you know, what I hear of that is not just something that we do on Sundays. It's got to be, you know, if you're going to prepare ahead of time, it's got to be something that you do every single day of the week. And uh, the, the Apostle Paul says uh, something to that effect in Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1. And I think they'll put it on the screens for you guys to follow along. But he says this, he says, Therefore, I urge you, uh, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Paul says that our true and proper worship is not just the, the songs that we sing or the gathering of everybody together in a room, but our true and proper worship is our lives, like how we live our lives, how we live our lives for God. And so essentially, my, my second question for the panel is like, how is worship a lifestyle for you guys? Obviously, we see how you do worship on stage and stuff, but how is it a lifestyle and how do we offer our lives to God in worship? Uh, Ava, why don't you take that one? Um, I really love that scripture just because I think it points to exactly who God has called us to be, which is worshipers. It's not just something that we do. It's something that it's who we are and who he has called us to be. So with that being said, I think it's kind of helpful to think of um, not what not what we do on Sundays as just something that leaves the stays in the building when we leave here. I think it's helpful to think of it as something that we carry into our schools, we carry into um, our jobs, we carry into our cheerleading squads, our football teams and our basketball teams, whatever it is that you're serving on I be, or that, that you're involved in, I think that is important to bring God. God wants to be with us there. <laughs> mm. He wants to be involved in every aspect of our lives, and I think that is what is meant by worship being a lifestyle. Man, that's so awesome. I think that we often don't think about worship that way, that it's something that we can do anywhere, anytime, any place. We think that we've got to have the band and the lights and the, the, you know, the music pumping and everything, but it can be something that can be done in our daily, everyday activities in our lives. That's, that's so good. So that's really what worship is. It is a lifestyle. It's something that we should be taking with us and doing every day. So back to the question I asked at the front end, why do you think we do this at church. I mean, if you've ever been to uh, any church service, very rarely do you attend one where there's not some kind of time where everybody sings together. There's some kind of music moment. And so um, I think that it's, it's a set aside time for us to sing and pray and, and honestly, like give something to God. So what is the point of the, the worshiping in song? Why do we sing songs when we gather together? Alex, you, you had a good thought on this. Yeah. Um, you know, the, to me, what the, it feels like the point of worshiping is, is First of all, coming in here and seeing like so many of you tonight, right? When we worship together, when we have the ability to sing and come together, we're singing truth about a God who we're singing to about who he is, right? But then we're also singing about who he says that we are. And that's the power that comes in that. But also you have a chance to sing something because the, the, the biggest thing that the enemy can do is make you feel like you're alone and make you feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through, right? And if you've ever felt alone, you're just like, nobody understands me. See, the beauty of coming together and singing this truth is you can look at the person next to you or the person across the room, and they're, I guarantee you they're going through similar things, if not the same exact thing. And so it's a moment for us to get together as a community and be able to say like, hey, I'm struggling, but they're also struggling too. I'm not alone. Jesus is here in this place. So if we can sing this truth, if we can believe this together, regardless of maybe where we feel like we're at, there's so much power in that. And then like, a like Ava said, that like we can take that not only here, uh, but we can take that out to our schools and to our families. Man, that's so good. Chris, why don't you tack onto yeah, that? We, we were kind of talking about this today when we were preparing for this. And so much in our culture wants to divide us and highlight the differences between you and me. And so to be in a room full of people from all different walks of life, boys, girls, short, tall, all that, and to stand here and sing together and say, I agree, God is good and worth singing about. In the context of our culture, it's never had any more power than it has today, in, in my heart especially. But. 
Man, that's fantastic. And I think that that's a really great piece of worship is it does give us perspective. And I like what you said, Alex, about like it, it, it kind of reminds us of who God is while also reminding us of, of who we are. And then that unifying piece of it, like Chris talked about, that it does, it's something that brings us all together for almost like a, a joint prayer that we're all saying together, right? And, and the music just helps us to, to stay on beat for people like me who aren't good at music. Um, and so essentially like the, the point of worship is that it's to, to draw us to engage with God. I mean, that's, the, that's, the, that's the point of it. It's, it's God created us to worship him. And so I, I read this, this quote one time that I think is fantastic, and I want to share it with you guys, is highlighting this idea that God created us to worship. It says, there's no such thing as a non-worshiping human being. The only thing that is in question, the only thing that divides us, is in who or what do we worship. There's no such thing as a non-worshiping human being. Everybody worships something. We're all worshipers. We all attach our identity, our hopes, our dreams, our beliefs, our, you know, our meaning and our purpose in lives to something. We all give our hearts to something. We give our lives to something. And essentially it comes down to you're going to worship one of two things, okay? You're going to either worship the creator, God, and you're going to give your life to him. You're going to find your identity in him. Your hopes and dreams are going to be found in him. Or you're going to worship something or someone in creation. So you're either worshiping God the creator or something or someone that God created. And I think that's ultimately the, the biggest kind of like thing that, that divides us in, in who or what we worship. Paul, again, I quoted him a minute ago, and I'll throw this on the, the side screens too. He says it like this in Romans chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. He says, Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know a lot of people that, that worship animals and reptiles. But um, a lot of times our, our allegiances and the things that we worship, the things that we um, kind of put our ultimate self-worth in, our ultimate value in, are things other than God. And so uh, my next question for the panel is that, you know, not many of us worship idols or birds or reptiles, but how are we still tempted to worship creation instead of creator? Abby, why don't you take that one? Yeah, I think it's really easy to fall into this because we're human beings and we love tangible things that we can see and touch. And I feel like something that comes up in my life over and over again is like my phone or friendships or something like that. And it's, it's tangible. And it sometimes can feel like Jesus and the, cre the creator of the universe isn't that tangible. And so it's really something that's easy to fall into. Um, but I think it's a waking up every single day and checking yourself because I there's like some quote that's basically like whatever um, you're spending the most time doing whatever you're um, like loving the most and you feel like the most attached to in your heart is probably what you're worshiping and so for me it's waking up every day I'm like I need to I need to figure out what I'm worshiping today and a lot of times it's not the creator but it's just the little things that he created that's so good I heard uh, the definition of worship one time as something that we ascribe value to. It's giving value to something in your life. And so as a follower of Jesus, as somebody who, who, who loves God, the number one thing that I should put value in and ascribe value to in my life is my relationship with God. And now, is that how it plays out? No, not exactly, not every day. I think that that's the great thing about coming together in a room full of people. It's almost like a kind of a recentering of our lives on God because we're all tempted so often in our day-to-day -day lives to put ourselves first or to put a relationship first or to put success first or to put achievement first. And worship is a great way for us to recalibrate ourselves and remind ourselves that if we call ourselves a Christian, the first thing in our lives should be God, that he should take that, that first place in us. That's really good, uh, Abby. Um, so the bottom line for tonight, the thing I really want everybody in here to kind of walk out of here knowing is this, that worship is our identity, not an activity. See, I think a lot of times we look at worship as, oh, it's that point in the service where we sing the songs, right? Like it's some kind of activity that we do. But if you look at what scripture says about worship and if you listen to what God says about worship, worship is an identity of who we are. The only question is who or what are you worshiping? Who or what are you putting value into? Who or what is the most valuable thing in your lives? And so with that being said, my next question for the panel is this, uh, God designed uh, worship to be uh, an identity for us and not just an activity. Uh, so what advice would you give to students to make worship more of who they are every single day instead of just something that we do when we gather on Sundays? Uh, Ava, why don't you kick us off with that one? Yeah, 
Um, I kind of want to first start off by saying that it's so easy to strive for perfection, and perfection isn't the goal. Actually, when God calls us worshipers, he's calling us worshipers to give us freedom. So that is out of a place of freedom and joy that says no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm going through, I have identity. I know where I stand. I know who I'm called by, and that alone calls me, makes me worthy. And so when we are looking for ways to draw near to God and, and to make worship something that's tangible in our lives, um, I'll give yourself grace, give yourself um, just the freedom to just learn and get there. I think that practice makes perfect. And I think just like with anything that we work towards and we constantly work and work and work, we eventually become stronger and stronger and stronger at that thing. And that's the same thing with faith. The more that we explore our faith, the more that we um, build on our faith, the bigger and deeper and stronger that it gets. And so daily, that's something that can be playing your favorite worship song, that can be journaling. For me, it was journaling. And sometimes for me, it was honestly just saying, God, just allow me to be more like you today. Allow me to be a better daughter, a better friend, a better student. Just, it can be so simple. It doesn't have to be this incredibly large, grand idea. It can be, um, honestly, just the most simple, um, pure thing. And I think the biggest thing that God is looking at is our hearts. So if we don't know the whole Bible, if we don't know how to quote the whole Psalms, <laughs> when God looks at our hearts, what does he see? And mm -hmm. I think that should be our prayer. And as long as that's your prayer, I think you're in the right step. So That's awesome, Ava. I think that's really great. Abby, why don't you add on to that? Yeah, I feel like my mind is immediately going to the verse that says that our, our body, our, they're, they're temples, and a temple is a sacred place. And so for you guys, I know not all of y'all are like, getting up on stage and doing the behind the scenes thing to actually have to do with like worship, but you're doing other things like worship can come out in taking care of your body. Like it can come out in working out and like eating healthy and being kind to people. Like there's so many different ways that you can worship. Um, and just kind of like going off what you said, there's a, another verse that talks about how we are to die to ourselves every day. And so in every day worshiping the Lord is waking up and saying, you know what, God, like, I might be tired today, I might be grumpy, but, you know, I'm going to choose to follow you and I'm going to choose to allow you to move in my life. And that could look a number of different ways, whether you're just being kind to somebody that's getting on your nerves. Um, and, like, even simple things like that are acts of worship. And I read this story one time just talking about how Jesus is always with you. And so even if you're not on the stage worshiping, but you're just in your car and you're listening to a song, I think that even that is an act of worship because Jesus is with you and he wants to hear about your day and he wants you to sing with him even if you're not a good singer. And so it's even the little things that you can do that are acts of worship. Yeah. I, uh, I needed to hear that more than anybody, Abby, because... <laughs> I'm not a good singer. So if you guys see me leaving here today going down 400 and I'm just like scream singing in my car and like the tears are rolling down, just know I'm like worshiping in that moment, right? Because uh, it's not pretty in here, but in there only God can hear me. So that's, that's a great place for me to put that into Thanks practice. Thanks for staring at us, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Chris. Uh, I, I think it's great to, to, to put that in perspective for all of us because, you know, I think a lot of times we do like to think of worship as just the thing that we do here. And it can be something that we can take with us every day and something that we practice in, in so many different ways and in so many different areas. So I think that's, that's a good reminder. Even if you guys didn't get anything out of it, I'm, I'm writing that down after this because I needed to hear it. Um, all right, the good thing is, is that worship is an integral part of what we do as a church. As, as we gather together as the people of God, we're going to sing songs. We're going to come together, and we're going to lift our voices in one accord to God. And so um, my last question for our panel today is this. <clears throat> what advice would you give to all of us, to students, to leaders, everyone in the room, to make the most of our worship time? And I mean, like, in that, the, our gatherings on Sundays. Uh, Chris, why don't you jump in on that one? Yeah, man, so... If you're anything like me, I find it really easy to worship and be joyful when my life is going well. You know what I mean? That's the natural human response. It's easy to believe God is for me when things are going well, right? But it's not as easy to sing and to believe and to have, find joy when your life's not going as well. And I want to encourage you to continue to worship and you continue to sing when things are going hard in your life. My dad got diagnosed with cancer about four years ago. And I can remember, man, not knowing what to pray anymore, not knowing where to find joy or where to find peace. I can remember standing on stages like this and 
singing songs that I had a hard time believing, you know, that God was for me and that his love wasn't going to let me down. It seemed like I was going to be let down, you know what I mean? And that was about the time that we started singing the song Bigger Than I Thought. And the first lyric of the song is, speak to me when silence steals my voice, because you understand me, you understand what I'm going through. And singing that song over and over again over my life, and like he said, worship can really change our perspective. I began to see, and God began to show me how um, he'd used the cancer journey to heal some things in my family that were broken that I thought were impossible to heal. You know what I mean? It changed my perspective on what was happening. And one of the things that we say at this church all the time is that we believe the songs we sing can affect the lives that we live. And I believe that to be true for you guys. So I just want to encourage you, when things are going good, worship. When things are going bad, continue to worship. Continue to sing the things that are, that are hard to believe and let them have an effect on your life. That's good, Chris. Alex, add on to that. If, Every time. If, yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's so, I love that. Well, because that, it's just, that's so real. And I think, I, I can only speak for me, but I can probably speak for all of us. I think we all have those moments where um, even though we're in front of people and we're being asked to lead you guys that we go through seasons of, of challenge and, and depression and heartache and, and pain and suffering and all those things. And, and that's huge. And, and the one thing that I've kind of heard kind of over as we've been doing this, this uh, panel, we've just been talking is um, worship is a choice. And when we come in here, um, we have the choice that, that God offers us this invitation every time that we're here or um, as we talk, like, not just in here, but like when you're at home, uh, maybe you're like getting showered in the morning and you're just having a conversation with the Lord or you're uh, in your car or if you don't have a car, my bad, or maybe <laughs> you're in your room, like wherever you are, if, you know, like it doesn't matter. But there's always that invitation that is being offered to all of us to say that Jesus is like, I just want to be near to you. I just want to know you and I want you to know how much I love you. And so when we're in this space and when we come here and we sing and we worship, it's a chance for us to choose to worship despite our circumstances and to say, yeah, I'm not feeling great. Like my emotions are getting the best of me, yeah. but God, I'm going to choose to sing regardless. I'm going to choose to take this truth that we sing about and that we're going to believe and to be able to sing that out and out. Because I know over my, uh, just in the past couple of years, I've seen that is that when I sing and when I believe despite my emotions, I just see God do incredible yeah. things in my life. And so it, it really is a choice. And know that this time is for you. Like we, I mean, I would do this just for fun, even if y'all weren't here, but <laughs> this is a time for you guys. Like when, when we come in here, yeah, it's like, it's cool to be like, yo, where's that girl at? You know, <laughs> but, which is, hey, that's cool. If you're here, we're just glad you're here. But you know, there's, there's so many things that are going on in the room, but we hope that you come in here and you're like, this is for me. This is for me to connect with Jesus, with a, that there's a God who, as Abby said earlier, who's real, who's tangible, who wants to meet with you and wants to know you and wants to, wants to remind you of who you are. So we just hope that uh, when we come together and we sing or when, when we go to Daytona in a week and it's going to be incredible that, that you, would, you wouldn't shy away from those moments, but that you would, you would lean in. And then the last thing is, uh, someone wise once said to me, uh, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly because you're doing it. And so here, here's what I mean when I say that is, is you might still get distracted. You might sing, but you're like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. You're still doing it. You're still making an effort. You're still putting forth. And like Ava said, um, there's a scripture that says that, that man sees the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. And so know that whatever you sound like, good or bad, it doesn't matter because all that matters is the Lord knowing where your heart is and knowing that, that you're making that effort towards worshiping, towards engaging him, towards meeting him and accepting that invitation. Yeah. I was Go just going to add on to this. I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way. Just as kind of like going off of what both of, they said, both of them said. Um, I feel like a lot of times when we're in those hard seasons or we're in seasons where, like, we're doubting, it can feel kind of hypocritical to continue to sing the words of, like, oh, I just, I don't know if I believe this. But something, like, I mean, I've had those feelings, too, of, like, man, is this, is this wrong of me to continue singing these things even though I'm unsure of where I'm at right now? And I just wanted to kind of give you guys a bit of encouragement of what you're singing, whether you're believing it in that moment or not, is still very true. And the God that you're singing it to is still very worthy of it. So I would just encourage you guys to, even when you're feeling the doubt and you're feeling like, I just don't know, like, really what I'm believing right now. Like, God still wants, he still wants your worship and he still wants your, your sacrifice every day. So That's so good. 
I think that that's a really good reminder for all of us to hear that, you know, it, we do go through seasons where it's hard to, like, engage and to, to be involved. And I think that I think about it sometimes that uh, sometimes we're really active in worship, but we're not very, our heart isn't very engaged. Like maybe you're jumping around and stuff, but you're just jumping around because that's what everybody else is doing. Or maybe it's the song that's like a little slower tempo and everybody starts raising their hand and you're like, I don't really know. I guess a lot of people have a question. So I guess I'll put my hand up too. I have questions. You know, it's like, I don't even, you're active, but maybe you're not engaged. And I love what, what Abby's kind of challenged us with there. It's like to engage our hearts to say, all right, what is this song saying? And, and, and do I believe it? And, and if I don't believe it, what could possibly need to change within me in order for me to align that. I think that's really, really great. Well, I, thank you guys so much for being here. Y'all, y'all give it up for the panel really quick. Um, yeah, you guys did great. And I loved what Alex kind of, you know, ended with a second ago, and he said that worship isn't something, you know, essentially what you said is worship isn't something we have to do. It's something we get to do. And so what I would like to do for us uh, is we're going to kind of close out this service with us having another time of worship. But before I do that, I want us to pray. So if you will, just, just bow your heads, close your eyes. Uh, I'm going to kind of allow just like a moment of silence. I want, you to, I want you to have a moment to just talk to God. Um, whatever is in your heart, whatever maybe is the thing that's in your life right now that's, that's difficult for you to worship. I want you to be able to maybe just kind of talk to God about that and maybe ask him to say, hey, God, I, you know what all's going on in my life. You know what I'm thinking and what I'm struggling with. And I just really ask you to help me move that to the side and let me focus in on you. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna let you guys pray, talk to God for a second, and then I'll kind of close us in prayer before we sing. Heavenly Father, throughout the room, there are heavy hearts who struggle to find the words to sing. Lord, as we celebrate you and talk about your fantastic attributes and all the things that make you God, for some of us, we, we've, we really resonate with Chris's story where it's like, God, I'm going through a hard season. And it's really hard for me to sing these words. And God, for others of us, we're like, <laughs> maybe they're like me in the room and they're like, God, I don't know what's wrong with me, but my voice can't make the sounds that these people on stage can make. And I, I just don't wanna do it because I'm afraid what people around me might think. And God, others in the room, maybe we're active and we're jumping around and we're moving and we're participating in worship, but it's just an outward show. It's not an inward thing that you're doing in our heart. And God, wherever each and every person in the room finds themselves, Lord, I pray that you would just meet us right there tonight. That tonight, as we close out our our service with a few songs, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, draw us closer to you. That you would use the words, use our voices, use the the songs and the melody and and, and everything, Lord, to just um, draw everyone in this room tonight to have one heartbeat, one voice, one prayer to you tonight. And God, tonight I pray for one voice, one heartbeat, and one prayer because in a a few short days, we're going to gather together with 2,500 people to celebrate and praise you in Daytona. But God, that's not what's important right now. Right now, I want each and every person personally to engage with you, to do business with you, God, and to allow you to shape their heart and prepare their heart for maybe something that is coming up soon for them. So God, as we stand, as we sing these songs, draw our hearts closer to you. Reveal the things in our hearts that are getting in the way, the ways that we're tempted to focus on creation instead of the creator. And God, in everything we say and do, help every note, every word, and every voice bring you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.